Welcome back to FM Jeeping. My name is Mark and today is part two of the full hydraulic steering install. So let's jump right back into where we left off. So now with the ram mount all set, the axle all set, um, I'm gonna put that off to the side, kind of push it off more toward the front. Now I'm gonna focus underneath the rig. All right, so now that I got everything drained, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the steering box stabilizer, the steering box, uh, and the lines that I'm not using right now. Don't do what I did. I forgot to disconnect the damn lines off the box. So I'm gonna have to throw a bolt or two into the steering box just so I can get enough leverage to uh, pop those lines loose. All right, so I went ahead, pulled the steering, telescoping steering shaft out of the Jeep. You can literally just, it should be able to slide. As you can see, it's greased up. Uh, this is supposed to be able to kind of uh, telescope, uh, telescope and uh, go smooth. And you also wanna check your U-joint here if there's any type of binding, uh, it'll be time to replace the shaft. Mine seems to be, it's gonna be okay. However, the orbital adapter is just a hair too small. So I'm gonna see if I can go ahead, open this up just in a hair, get this to seat, and then that way put the bolt across the flat part, and uh, I should be okay. See, a little too far. Oh. All right, let's see if we can bolt that in. All right, here's where the fun part begins. Getting this back in. Oh, you know what? Let's go right here. There we go. There we go. Now that I have my steering input shaft all set, I gotta worry about mounting the orbital. Um, years ago I bought a kit that included this plate here that goes on the outside of the unibody over, you know, over here where it bolts. It includes the metal um, bracket or the metal box spacer that goes here that replaces the aluminum one that always cracks. And then it had a bar that goes across the front of the engine and bolts over here. And what it did is it kept the steering box from being able to shift side to side when you steered, especially with heavier uh, tires. But I never used this because I had uh, frame stiffness. But what's nice about it is, is it mirrors the factory steering box um, mounting points. This is all extra here. So I'm going to cut this off here. It's kind of hard to see, but cut this off here, shift this forward, weld in some captured nuts here so I can utilize the factory mounting points for the orbital. This is a universal orbital bracket. And I'm just gonna weld this onto this plate here somewhere, space it the right way, gusset it in, and I'm good to go. So I got the bracket back up, clearanced it. Seems like it's gonna be pretty good. I've also, in the meantime, went got the universal orbital bracket. I loosely bolted it up with two bolts and we're gonna try test fit this and get an angle so we can kind of tack it in place and see if we're gonna get the right clearance. Kind of a little better. Right like that? I think that'll work. This is roughly what I'm looking at here. So what I'm gonna do, just to kind of test it out, I'm gonna go ahead, clean off a couple of spots. Actually, I'll clean off the whole bracket here where I feel, figure I'm gonna weld. I'm gonna score it and tack it in place. All 
All right, so I got the bracket all tacked up. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the right size uh, nuts and bolts right now, so I'm gonna have to improvise at least temporarily until I can get some new nuts and bolts. Um, so yeah, this is not gonna be the final product. I just need this to hold up so I can make sure that we're gonna be good space-wise. this way. Okay, let's try this now. something to do with the fact that it's not fully mounted. All right. I like it. Good distance. It's out of the way. It's relatively protected. Especially the lines, because I'm going to have the bar going across. Yeah. I, uh, I say let it run. I'm going to go ahead and finalize this. In. I'm gonna go ahead and hard mount this thing one more time. Uh, if I'm happy, I'll just go ahead and burn in the gussets and then kind of just clean up the mount, uh, you know, smooth it out so it's not all sharp edges. Then I gotta order up some hardware for the bolts. So I hope my camera captured that, uh, started going rogue on me. So I'm not necessarily sure it captured everything, but we got everything dry fitted. Everything looks like it clears. I'm pretty happy with how the, the bracket came out. It looks like it's gonna protect and hold the orbital. So that's what we're, uh, that's what we're looking for. So grab a quick lunch. We'll come back and burn this thing in. All right, we're back from lunch. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop the bracket again. Uh, final weld, uh, at least all the gussets and everything. And uh, I still need to get the hardware for it, but at least that way I can kind of start working on getting the axle back under the rig and start working on running the lines and the cool.
So off camera the other day, I uh, cleaned up the shop a little bit because I needed some room to work. I wrestled the axle back underneath the rig just so I can have an idea of what, um, what it's going to look like. Uh, I do have uh, new welded bungs for my Himes coming in because I had to cut uh, some dom to length. But yeah, I uh, kind of wanted to see what it looked like. I like it. it. looks pretty good. So now the real question is, is, is are my factory lines going to bolt into the trail gear orbital? Um, I'm really hoping that's the case because I really don't want to mess with the lines. Uh, you know, truth be told, I really don't want to screw with it too, too much. But uh, we'll see what happens when we get under there. But yeah, I mean, everything is bolted up. I have... Um, it's hard to see down there right now, but I, I've got the bracket unpainted, all in there, bolted up, snugged up for now, until I get the new hardware that goes through the unibody. But uh, I like the clearance of the steering shaft. So let's go ahead, take a look at some of those lines and see what we're working with here. All right, so it's kind of hard to see, but it looks like this one's the cooler. This is left, this is right, and this is the pump. So, if that's the case, let's see what we look like here. So I am gonna need a custom line from the power steering pump to the orbital, which I kind of figured was gonna happen. I just was hoping and dreaming, and uh, my hopes and dreams didn't kind of pan out this time around. I'm also gonna figure, I need to figure out what I wanna do with the cooler. Now, I was given a heat sink cooler that um, was part of the kit, you can see, it's in here. And it's all set up to fit on my um, to fit on my setup, and it'll work. I just I I haven't been totally sold on the whole heat sink cooler. I prefer uh, you know tube and fin ones, especially ones I can throw a fan on. I'm still kind of up in the air on that, so I might do a little bit more research off camera and just kind of figure out what I want to do there. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and attach the two lines that I do have that do fit from the RAM to the orbital for now, just kind of like loose fit them, just so I know what the lengths are and if it'll fit with uh, the flex. That's it. It's kind of what it looks like. That might be okay in terms of a flex, especially if this comes down here. I just got to make some type of retaining, um, a retaining uh, bracket or something here. All right, good news. The bungs showed up, so I can go ahead and start making my links. These are the original ones that came with my kit, and I can't really use them, so these are going to go in the old scrap heap and. Uh, Go from there. I'm just gonna lift up the, the axle ever so slightly, get it propped on jack stands, get the tires off so I can center uh, the tires and measure exactly what I need for my legs. So with the tires off, I got the axle pretty well centered. See the tape measure going across. I got to do the front one more time. 
and I've got my uh, links uh, bolted in. I'm just going to go ahead and mark them uh, once I get the axle centered. So I'll just cut this. Uh, this is the existing one, welded my new bung. And I have this piece of dime here that I salvaged from my, uh, my three link, my three link. So I'm just going to go ahead, cut this to length and then uh, weld it up. But once again, I'm just gonna make sure the axle's all squared and uh, double check my measurements, mark, cut, weld, and we should be good there. obviously not finished because I'm going to pull the whole axle out and repaint pretty much the bait, the body of the axle, the links, and the, the mount. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and put the tires back on with a couple lugs. And uh, then we're going to work on routing uh, the power and the return lines to uh, the pump. So i got a couple different avenues I'm going to have to go down. Okay, so off camera, I went ahead and painted the ram mount, um, cleaned up the axle the best I could, painted it really quickly, just taking forever to cure because, you know, it's cold. The paint doesn't like to cure when it's cold. I also went, and uh, this is just loosely run right now. Um, this is the line that I have made from the, uh, from the power steering pump down to the orbital. Um, it's hard to kind of see, but it kind of curves around here and ends up back down, if you can see down right under there. This is not going to be the, my final routing. This is just for uh, mock-up for now. What I plan on doing is uh, running a 90 degree uh, fitting off this fitting and bringing the pump back around the res, away from all the rotating things. Down here, I'm gonna make like a little bracket. I might pull it off one something over here. Uh, and hard mount like a, a guide or some type of a holder to keep it off the steering rod But yeah, um, in case you're wondering uh, For the factory XJ. This is a 16 mil by 1.5 um, Automotive adapter or the o-ring style into a, uh, a JIC 6 uh, male adapter and then I, I, I have this hose made uh, I think it's about 36 inches long so uh, I'll show you more underneath the rig uh, when I get there, but for now, what I want to do is pull this grill here and pull out my factory or the, the cooler I was using. about two weeks since I last kind of really did much of anything I uh, got sick so I got to kind of chip away here now for the time being I did come in I cleaned up a little bit although there's still leftover uh, stuff from my engine harness that I tore apart it's kind of hard to see I'm still in the process of putting it all back together but axle back underneath and that's kind of where it's gonna stay I'm waiting on parts right now I went out and ordered a brand new 10x10, 10 10, uh, 10 pass tube and fin cooler, which is gonna go right here. And I gotta plumb that into the orbital. So, just kinda get you caught up. I did have a heat sink uh, cooler, but I've heard that these don't do as well as the tube and fin. 
And once again, that's personal preference. I like the tube and fin because that's, you know, the air goes through it a little bit better. Um, so I'm going to mount that right there. So we'll see when we get it in. But for the time being, what I want to do is get the axle, you know, fully bolted back up under the rig because I can now reach my orbital mount with the axle in no problem. I should also be able to plumb everything with the axle in no problem. So really all I got to do is put the axle back in and paint some more pieces. I got a couple of pieces I got to finish painted. Uh, please don't judge too, too hard, but this is the, uh, the bridge for the top. And here is the lower, the lower diff cover. And I got to also paint the, uh, the links. All right, so I got the cooler in, everything. Um, the cooler looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with at least the initial setup. This is a 10-pass stacked tube and fin style cooler. Um, I also bought a uh, half-inch or eight-and um, line and fittings. So I have about 10 feet of line, a bunch of fittings and stuff like that. I also had to go get the right fitting for the orbital, so we should be golden there. Um, I do have to say the only thing that I'm not too thrilled with on this cooler is how to mount it. Um, everything that I see online, they use those zip ties that go through this and you zip tie it to your radiator. I've never been a big fan of that because with these rigs and the way that they bounce up and down, this stuff being soft like tinny aluminum stuff, I just see fins and you know rows getting busted. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hard mount this to the rig. All right, so to mount this thing, I think I'm going to um, take some of the stock that I have here. This is actually from a file cabinet, of all things. It's um, fairly thin, but thick enough that it'll hold, and I can bend it in place. I just got to drill a hole. And um, here, I might actually um, tack it right to this shielding here, try to stay away from the actual uh, portions that carry the fluid but I might kind of tack it down here or up here and then mount it in uh, potentially four places. Uh, line the bottom here with rubber and then line all the areas um, that mount to the body with rubber. So that way it'll, it'll hard mount it, but it'll also isolate it from vibration, which ultimately kills these things. All right, so let's see what I come up with. cooler mounted um, I just got to do one more bolt in the bottom there to kind of hold it in place um, and then I got to plumb the cooler into the orbital which is down basically in the same factory steering box side um, I also still need to pull that mount out and paint it but that I'm gonna hold off I want to get the system working first and then what's nice about the orbital is I can actually unbolt it from the mount and kind of hold it up into the rig with some bungee cords or something and uh, paint the mount after the fact. So I'm not going to let that kind of slow down the project. But for right now, I'm going to go ahead, pull off these 90s and start plumbing the cooler into, uh, into the orbital. So I bought this kit as a whole. It was used and I got a really good price on it. For the most part, I got most of the, it had good bones to it. So I saved a lot of money on a, the main components, which was the orbital and the RAM. And I even got some of the DOM and the clay, clevis ends and things like that. So I saved a lot of money, but there are some things that I do want to improve on this kit. Now on the orbital, it came in with 3 eighths 
um, outputs on all the the valve, all, all four valves. Now, um, something I want to try to do is alleviate cavi cavi uh, cavitation cavitation on the return line because I think that was the problem I was having on my other system is that I went from a thin line to a big line, and it kind of create you know it wasn't free flowing and that's what you want to do to avoid getting air in the system so what i did is i went out sourced a half inch version of this fit it into the valve um the orbital valve so i'm going to be running basically half inch for the entire return which i think should hopefully alleviate any type of cavitation that might happen so i got all dash eight or half inch line for the return so what i'm going to do right now uh with that long story being told i'm going to go ahead and uh get a loose idea of how much hose I need and uh, start fabbing up the lines. So I got the, all the lines run. Um, pretty happy with how they came out. I just I'm gonna finalize all the lines here in a minute, clamp them down so they don't go anywhere. Same thing with the the cooler. But what I'm gonna really start doing is work from the top down, make sure everything's tight, run the way I want, has decent clearance, so that I'm not gonna get any leaks. And then I'm gonna start trying to bleed this thing. I went ahead, went through the whole system. Checked all the hoses. I think I got these ones oriented, right? All right, so if you look at the orbital, it's hard to see. There's four inlets or an outlets or four, you know, ports. This is uh, the P is for the pump, the T is for the tank, A is the for the right, and B is for the left. Now, I figure that if I want to turn, this is, and this is just me thinking here, if it wants me to turn right, I believe that should be on this feed. Because I want to push it the valve, push the piston that way. Although I'm kind of having a moment here. It is what it is. Um, but I went through, tested all the hoses. They're all tight. Snugged up pretty well. Uh, I try to orient this the best I can. Right now I got a zip tied out of the way. So what I'm going to do is go through the cycle. One of the cycles that I've read about on how to do hydro, full hydro steering, bleeding. I'm going to cycle the steering wheel a bunch of times. Watch the reservoir, see if it goes down. And then I'm gonna like kind of prime the system a couple times without starting the engine, just to kind of get that pump moving a little bit. And then uh, do that till the reservoir stops going down. And then I'm gonna start uh, start the vehicle and cycle it um, several times back and forth just to see if I can get something going. So that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, give me a few minutes here, I'm gonna time lapse you. And uh, we'll see how we go from there. tell that I'm, I've reversed the hoses you can tell watch like this all right so I guess I'm bleeding the pressure out I'm turning to the right this is what happens it turns left so I gotta go ahead and reverse the hoses all right so I went back swapped the lines filled it up I did a preliminary bleed I got it now so the you know if I turn right I turn right there's some air in the system but turns right if i turn left turns left so what i'm gonna do off camera is go through literally sit in the rig listen to a podcast turn it a bunch of times get the system moving try to bleed it the best i can watch for leaks so far so good uh check the fluid uh level on the reservoir make sure that that doesn't go down once i cycle it back and forth and the doesn't go down then i know i've for the most part bled at least the pressure lines and then uh once i'm done with that i can start cycling i can turn the engine on and um go lock to lock uh and and do it that way i will probably airbound um i will probably airbound it a little bit more but you know this is going to take a couple tries
So some things I wanted to touch base on uh, that I didn't originally cover during the actual install. Now, this is a WJ power steering pump with the WJ reservoir. The reason I opted for this was it does have a higher uh, threshold for pressure, or at least that's what I'm being told. Um, and I know a lot of people do run this. This is a bolt-in system. And, you know, you can find these at AutoZone, Pep Boys, uh, O'Reilly's, whatever. Um, if I kind of blew one of these on the trail or I was, uh, you know, away from home, I could actually go to the store and most likely be able to pick up one of these pumps. Um, the other reason why I like this it, over, we'll call it the factory uh, power steering pump, is that the reservoir on this is larger. Uh, due to the fact that this originally in the WJ runs the cooling, I'm sorry, the power steering system, as well as a hydraulic fan for the cooling system. Uh, so it actually has a greater um, capacity, uh, which is what you want. You want more fluid in the system as possible. So I also wanted to originally run the hose around this way and around the back of the reservoir and then down. That didn't work out so well. I couldn't get it to work with all the bends, but what I was able to do was get a, um, a six JIC or JIC six 45 degree swivel. It was able to raise it up about an inch and put it right in the center between the res and the power steering pump pulley and the fan. So I'm, you know, I'm clear all the way around. I mean, this thing could shake all I want. It's not gonna hit anything. It clears the hood very well and it's a nice gradual slope down uh, down past my steering shaft, which it won't hit unless I really, really kind of bend into it. And I also fabbed up this little bracket here from aluminum. And it looks like it's going to do the job. It's going to keep the power or the pressure hose off the steering shaft. You definitely don't want to rub this because under this, this is where all the high pressure is. So if you rub that um, to the point where it gets thin, it could blow on you. But I think I'm pretty good here. It's right in the middle there. It's away from anything that'll rub on and, and, and potentially rupture the line. So under the rig, here's what we got going on. I have um, the lines from the cooler uh, retained. This is a uh, flexible retainer. It allows the hoses to move but kind of keeps them in line so that way they're not bouncing around too, too much. Um, they can still contact. They still can contact the harmonic balancer, but I am going to tie this line and this line together and that will secure this from being able to hit the harmonic balancer. I'm also going to encase these two hoses that come down from the cooler and larger hoses that go around and zip tie them as a preventative skin to keep it from rubbing on this cross member here. So if you look, um, over time, this can rub up and down and then potentially rupture this line, which is not what you want. Now these two lines here that come off the orbital I gotta rig up something to keep those from bumping into the harmonic balancer. Now, if I was gonna do it all over again, uh, I would have went and got these lines custom made with maybe a 45 degree angle, put them off at a little bit of an angle away from the engine, then kind of curve them, curve it down and around. But these are recycled and a little bit of savings, uh, you know, so I didn't have to go buy new lines. Although, like I said, the next set of lines will probably have 45 degrees coming off here to uh, pull it away from the engine. So in conclusion, I'm pretty happy with the system. I can steer with one finger. My tires are actually aired down to my wheeling PSI, which is about four to five PSI. So it's gonna be harder to turn those tires. But like I said, I can turn those wheels with one finger just all the way around. And um, I have taken this on the road, just around the block, relax. Um, it does have a it does have a return to send uh, return to center uh, if I let go of the wheel on a turn or after a turn. So I mean it's not perfect. I mean I could definitely tweak the caster a little bit more and get a little bit more um, of that feel. However, I'm pretty happy with the way it is now, so I might just let it go. I don't operate this vehicle on the road anymore, so I don't really have a need for that. We'll say, but all in all, I'm super happy with the system. Um, now for the price tag, let's kind of dive into this for a second. Something you gotta keep in mind if you wanna try this is going to be the price. Now, if, you like some, if you're somebody who likes brand name, brand new, you're gonna expect to pay between $1,500 to $2,000 for a, a drop-in kit. Um, and sometimes that doesn't even include the power steering pump, sometimes it does. 
uh, you kind of have to shop around and find what you want. Now, if you're ambitious and you, you're okay with used parts and you want to source your own thing, you could put this together much cheaper. Um, I can honestly tell you my full kit from, from start to finish, dropped in, ready to go, came in just under $800 at the time of filming. Now, it's obviously more than I would have liked to spend, but for what I feel like I got, I think that's pretty good considering that, like I said, a new kit is going to be between $1,500 and $2,000. So um, I'll take a win where I can. So if you have any questions about some of the parts I used or where you can get them, check the comment section below. I'm going to leave a couple links to the, my Amazon store as well as some of the places I found some of these parts in case you want to do this on your own. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave those down in the comment sections below as well. And just like always, we'll catch you on the next one.